Hey everybody, thanks for being with us today. If you are new to New Day, welcome. We're so glad you found us online. If you are a mom, happy Mother's Day. Uh, mom, I love you. I'm grateful for you. But especially if you are a, a mom who has been parenting during this pandemic, and if you have been figuring out the online schooling situation and you have been managing to keep your kids occupied every waking minute of every day, you especially deserve a medal this year. And so families, can you, can you really let her know how much you love and appreciate her today? Every day, but especially today, because she's got a tough job. A couple of notes for you before we begin. First off, this last Tuesday night, we had a great first New Day block party. Uh, we're, we're hosting these discussions every Tuesday night during the month of May from 6.30 to 7.30 on Zoom. And uh, we're just doing the simple job of getting together and talking about what it looks like to love our neighbors well. And I know for myself personally, uh, just even having that kind of conversation with people elevates my awareness of my neighbors throughout the week. And uh, so it's really great. Would love to have you join us for that, for one or all of the rest of these. And you can just email info at newdaynw.com and we will get you the Zoom link for that. Also, uh, our next in-person worship gathering will be next Sunday, May 16th, down at our, our space in Browns Point that we call The Hub. And uh, really great things are happening there. And so if you have not checked out one of those services before, really encourage you to come on down and see what it's all about. You can register and sign up at newdaynw.com. Uh, we'll have two different service times so you can pick the time that works well for you. We'd love to have you there. Well, we have a long-standing tradition at New Day on Mother's Day of not preaching to or at moms, but actually hearing from a mom. And it's not, generally speaking, a, a Mother's Day themed message. It's just a, a good excuse to hear from different voices. And this year, I've asked Carrie LeBang if she would share with us. Mike and Carrie have been part of the New Day family for a really long time, and we just love them. They have served in so many different capacities. And Carrie is a great speaker and teacher. She's launched her own podcast this year called The Spacious Place, and you can go check that out. Uh, but Carrie's going to talk with us this morning about what it means to really be present. And I don't know about you, but for me, that is a tough concept because so often I am not in the moment. I am, I am off in my head, either in the past or the future, or who knows where. Uh, so what does it look like for us to actually really be living in the present, present to God and present to one another? Well, I think you're going to really be blessed by what Carrie has to say as she takes us into Scripture and to what God has been showing her. So let me pray for us as we get started, and then I'll hand it off to her. God, we thank you for, for yet another week where you have shown your faithfulness to us and you have been with us. And I think about today as a day that we uh, set aside to really honor and and remember the powerful nature of, of moms and, and their role in our lives in shaping us and forming us. God, we thank you for creating motherhood, uh, and we thank you for the impact and influence that they have. And, and God, so many, so many of us have, have great memories of our moms, and for other people, it's more painful. Uh, either because the relationship was broken or there's been loss and regret and grief. And so I know that this day is, is one full of all kinds of different emotion for people. And God, we thank you that you are the father of all that is called mother. And so when, when we have those those more painful associations with the word, I thank you that you are the perfect parent and, and that you can heal up those wounds. So I pray comfort for those who are needing it today. I pray, uh, God, for celebration for those moms who are needing affirmation in the work they are doing. It is a hard job. And so, God, I pray for strengthening 
for them. And God, uh, I, I pray especially for Carrie. I thank you for her willingness to, to bring this message today. I pray your blessing on her for, for doing that. And I pray that you would speak through her um, to each person listening. God, um, thank you that, that you are a God who invites us to experience your presence on a really deep level. And we pray that you would help us grow in our understanding of, of how to be better at that. God, uh, we love you. We look forward to what you have for us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, New Day. My name is Carrie Levang, and I am really excited for the opportunity to be able to share with you uh, the message this morning on this Mother's Day. And so happy Mother's Day to any of you who are mothers. Happy Mother's Day to any of you who have mothers or have been mothered by someone. I want to um, just start by making it clear that today's message isn't a specific Mother's Day message. It's more like a family message. It's a message that God has been putting on my own heart this year and working me through over the last year or so, and most specifically over the last four or five months or so. And so I'm excited that I get to be the one to step into this place. I wanna just pause for a minute though and just say, if you are not regularly praying for the leaders of not only New Day Church, but the church globally. I, I want to just commission you this morning to do that, to step into this place of really talking to God and asking God to lead them. We're experiencing a time unlike any other time, um, and they've never done it before. And prayer matters. And Talking to God is the most powerful thing that we can use our lives to do. And so, or one of the most powerful things. And so I just want to encourage you to do that because I'll tell you what, preparing to speak today has been a lot of work. And so when I think about our Jeff going through that every single week of not only meeting with God and hearing the message that he has for us, but also preparing it, putting it together, and then videoing it. And it's not easy. I'll just tell you that. And so I'm going to do my best. I've never spoke to a video camera necessarily before. I've always had faces to look at. And so that's part of the reason that I put you uh, put my bookshelf behind me so that you guys could uh, see my people that are behind me. These These shelves are filled with the people that matter most to me. And so... Um, there are going to be some faces that I'm going to be looking at pretending like they're listening. So there we go. I'd like to start our time off together by, um, like I said, it's not going to be a Mother's Day message. It's going to be a message more about family and what it means to be the family of God, to belong to God, to be his sons and to be his daughters and what that means for us and about us. And so um, I thought it would be good if we started by talking about what New Day's mission statement is. So how about if I just give you a second and everybody says that out loud together. If you're alone, say it out loud. It's going to be great. If you've got people with you, say it together. So here we go. Yes, that's it. Live out of being loved by God. Isn't that awesome? So simple and yet so concise. And so when I think about our time together, that's kind of where we're going to launch out of and sort of into. Um, now, maybe for you hearing, even hearing those words live out of being loved by God. I, I was thinking as I thought about using that statement and I thought, you know, um, for some people, that's not easy. It's, it's not as easy for some to think about what love really feels like. Many of us have experienced painful scenarios in our life that have really fractured that our ability to receive love and to take it in in deep ways. I recognize that and I understand that. And even more than that, God knows that and he understands it and he is patient 
and he has time. And just because we have a muscle that might not be fully developed, none of ours are, but just because we have a muscle that, whether it's been injured or, um, or not developed yet well, um, doesn't mean that we don't press in and lean into the invitation, God's invitation for us to receive his love and to take it in and to move out of that love and let that inform us for the way that we live our days. And so I would like to just pray before we really get started. So Lord Jesus, I'm just so grateful for this opportunity to be your mouthpiece on this Mother's Day. God, thank you that you determined from eternity past that um, we would be together today. And so for every single person that is listening on whatever day it is, I just wanna ask that they would encounter your spirit in a fresh way. God, would you do heart surgery on us in the places that need the tender touch of your spirit? Would you grow us? and be gentle with us and lead us and poke us where we need to be poked and prod us into places where you're calling us into spaces of more. God, I'm asking you specifically for me that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing to you. Use this time for your kingdom, God, and for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. Now, kind of funny that you got to look at a picture that wasn't me while I was praying, right? I did that on purpose and I wanna tell you why. That little face that you got to look at that whole time that I was talking to God is our youngest granddaughter, Winnie. Her name's Winslow James. And I chose to have her picture there for a couple of reasons. First of all, she's adorable, right? I mean, that face, amazing. And not only is she adorable, but she is super special because she's our miracle girl. And every single time I look at her, not just that picture, but maybe the 10 or 12,000 other pictures that I have of her and my other grandkids on my phone, but every single time I look at the any picture of Winnie or spend time with Winnie, when I look at her face, it is a reminder to me that our God is a miracle worker because Winnie was a miracle baby. She got here because of the help of a lot of people that helped usher that miracle girl into our lives. And so I just love that. And I wanted you to experience her face as well. The other reason that I put that picture up is because I think it's important for us to look at what children look like. And I say that because here we are in our grown up selves, but the way that God sees us, the way that he views us, is through the lens of his children. And we're gonna talk about that in a, in a couple of different ways as we spend our time together. But I think it's important for us to remember that children don't have it all together. Children are messy and they're curious and they're spontaneous and they bring joy and they bring delight and they are also hard at times and frustrating at times. And if you lean in real close, you can actually experience the scent of heaven on them. They are so close to having been with him and then they've, they're brought into our presence. So John 1 12 says, but to all who did receive him, that's us, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And that is what we are. We are God's children. And I'm so, so grateful for that. This last year has been crazy. I think that we would all agree to that. It's been um, like no other year that we've experienced before. But for me, it has been that way. And I say that because um, I have been experiencing something completely new and embarking on something completely new. God invited me to begin a podcast. And so in January of 2020, little did I know that we were gonna be entering into a pandemic and the world was gonna shut down and um, people were not gonna be commuting or listening to podcasts as much. And um, that's okay because I really believe that this thing that God invited me into in some ways has been mostly for me more than it has been for others. Now, I've had the privilege of having people respond to me and let me know how The Spacious Place with Carrie Levang, that's me, that's the name of my podcast, 
has um, impacted them and how my own story in living out my identity in Christ uh, throughout many different seasons has been helpful for them. And that has been a gift to me. And so if you are somebody who listens to The Spacious Place, I just want to say thank you. I deeply appreciate it. And at the same time, um, I've just totally enjoyed it. And I have found that to be true, that the things that God often calls us to are the very things that God has something for us in. And I think that's just wonderful. I think it's so uh, genius and brilliant of God to do things that way. So the reason that I tell you that is not to promote my podcast, but to let you know that what I'm going to talk about today comes directly out of what I've been talking about for the last four or five months on my podcast, The Spacious Place. And what that is, for those of you who listen, is presence. Been talking a lot about presence. What it looks like to press into presence, presence with God, presence with others, and even presence with ourself. And I know that sounds strange, but I think we can go about our days and not even pay attention to what's really going on inside of us. And so I thought that it would be great if I just shared some of the things that God has impacted me with as I've gone through this. And this idea of presence is not just something that I came up with. This is actually God's idea. The Bible is chock full of messages of God's invitation for his people to come, to come into his presence and to go to go out and to be with others and actually be present with one another, engage with one another, listen to one another, listen to God, listen to ourselves, pay attention to the things that we're thinking and the ways that we're behaving and acting. And it, it's just this big, full thing that we could talk about for a really long time, but we're not going to. So, Psalm 105 verses four through five says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. That's another reason that I showed you that picture of Winnie because God reminds me all the time through the miracle of Winnie of what he is like. But the first thing that I wanna leave you with when we talk about presence is that Presence with God is a divine invitation. And here's what I mean. Jesus made a way for presence to be possible for us. Remember, if we go all the way back to the beginning, which is so good to do. I spent the last year studying Genesis with some people and it was really, really helpful for me. It's always good to go back and I'd encourage you to do that if you haven't done that recently. But if we go back and take a look at God's intended design for his creation, you can see all of that in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 and then we get to Genesis 3. Throughout those first couple of chapters, God, the, Adam and Eve are walking with God. They're spending time in God's presence. God is spending time in their presence. And then we get to Genesis 3, and we see this total shift in the story. And this is where the enemy, the evil one, the deceiver, uh, convinces Adam and Eve to do the very thing that God, the God who's been their protector and their guide and their creator and their lover and their father all along has said, you can have anything in the whole garden, just not this one tree. And you know, there's an important piece of that story that I, I learned long ago. And um, I heard this quote about it recently that I thought was really, really important because I think it's it's easy for us to think, why would God have put the tree there if he didn't want them to partake of it? Why would he like test them, if you will? That's what I've heard people say. And I heard Jeff Becky, my friend who lives over in Maui, say that God's this God putting this tree here was really an invitation to intimacy. And here's what he means. That tree was put in the garden as an invitation for Adam and Eve to press in to God, 
to have presence with God, to experience God rather than running towards the very thing that God had said, this is not good and it's going to lead to death. So all this happens, the world gets fractured, everything changes, and God says you can't be in the garden anymore. And really that's also a grace gift to them because had they eaten from the other tree, they would have lived in this place, this sinful place of separation from God forever. So actually God moving them out of the garden was actually a grace gift so that God could begin his redemptive purposes to reconcile the world back to himself. Maybe that was a new paradigm for some of you. I don't know about you, but for me, those are, have been helpful things um, around those confusing places. So when we think about God and presence and him inviting us to presence and this being a divine invitation, all we have to do is look at the Christmas story, right? Because Jesus comes down. God comes down and makes a way for us to experience his presence. Remember Emmanuel, God with us. This is the presence that we're talking about, being with God, experiencing God, leaning into God, pressing in in our daily days. And, and this Emmanuel that came and created this opportunity for us to be reconciled to God, was really, if you've studied the Old Testament at all, you understand that prior to that, there, the Holy of Holies was only a place where the priests could go. The Ark of the Covenant was there, and that's where the Bible says that God met with them. And now God made a way that we can meet with him. I like this quote this prayer, it's called A Prayer of Holy Occupation by Oswald Chambers. And I feel like it kind of sums up what I'm trying to say. It says, we are based on the platform of reality in prayer by the atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not our earnestness that brings us in touch with God, not our devotedness, nor our times of prayer, but our Lord Jesus Christ vitalizing death and our times of prayer are evidences of reaction on the reality of redemption, so we have confidence and boldness of access into the holiest. What an unspeakable joy it is to know that we each have the right of approach to God in confidence, that the place of the ark is our place. Therefore, brethren, having boldness, what an awe and wonder of privilege to enter the holiest in the perfectness of the atonement by the blood of Jesus. And so I feel like that encapsulates what I was saying to you before. But I think it's important to note that this whole uh, idea of reconciliation on God's part was motivated by love and delight because one of God's attributes is our Father, right? Psalm eighteen nineteen, which has been huge for me, says, he brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Did you hear that? God loves you. God rescued you, not because he had to, but because he delighted in you. And he delights in you. I have to say, one of the biggest places where when I am having a hard time taking this in where God brings me back to, to remind me of this very thing is with my own kids. I have four kids ranging from age 35 all the way down to age 24. And um, I, they're all grown now. And so I don't get to see them as often. But when I do, I have this eagerness about me when the kids are coming even if it's just one of them coming, I, I find myself bubbling up with joy, with delight. I'm eager to hear what's new in their life. I'm excited to look at their faces. And because I'm a hairdresser, I usually get to cut their hair at the same time. And so I get to touch them, which when your kids grow up, you just don't get that as much anymore. And so for me, this is a glimpse of what it's like for God, just a tiny sliver of how God feels towards us. 
And I'm glad that God has allowed me to be a mom to get to delight in what it's like to have that kind of delight and love towards someone else. You know, God's invitation for us to lean into presence with him, it, like I said, is all over the Bible. But in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 14, he says, come away with me, my love. And I, I love that because I think sometimes we can get this idea in our head that God is something other than what he really is. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But there are times when I get mixed up and I get confused and I begin to forget that God loves me and that he delights in me. Psalm 28, 8 says, the Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. That's you and that's me. Those of us who are in Christ, who have said yes to his invitation to be in relationship to him, we have a place of refuge and it is God himself. He's constantly saying, come away with me, my love. I want to spend time with you. You matter to me. I want to hear the things that are on your heart. I want to hear what you're nervous about. I want to hear what you're scared about. I want to hear what you're sad about. I want to hear what you're excited about. I want to hear what you're dreaming for. He knows it all already, but he still loves the interaction. He loves the coming away together. And I don't know about you, but I think our world feels more divisive than it's ever felt. And at times it ends up feeling like we've got this pulling that's taking place, this side or this side, this side or this side. I've got to find a way to not rock the boat. And our God is saying, no, you don't. You don't have to find a way to not rock the boat. You got to come away with me because I am the boat. I am your place of refuge and I have exactly what you need to face your days. So the invitation is there. And I love what he said at the very end of his life, at the very end of the book of Matthew, when he was just getting ready to leave and he had told the disciples, I have to leave so that the Holy Spirit can come. But he says this last thing in verse 20, the end of the verse, he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we have God with us, Emmanuel, with us all the time. And yet we don't always experience him, do we? Because the second thing is, purposefully practicing presence, there's a tongue twister for you, is going to require us learning how to slow down and how to pay attention. It's going to require purposeful engagement on our part. I read a book this past year called uh, The Deeply Formed Life by somebody named Rich Viotis, and he says this, to be deeply formed is to regularly come back to a different rhythm, a rhythm marked by communion, deep reflection, and a life-giving pace that enables us to offer our presence to the present moment. And I really like that because we are people who are being formed. And what we want to be is people who are deeply formed, people who are regularly coming back to this rhythm of formation that God has invited us into. Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 says, this is out of the message. I really like this translation for this verse. It says, so if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what's going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. So God's invitation for us to experience presence with him, his invitation when he's saying, come, Carrie, come away with me, my love. That's where the action is. He's saying, I would love for you to come be with me so that I can transform all the places where you're getting mixed up by the things that you're taking in from other places. And I can make, give you this heavenly picture and I can untangle places 
and give you the ability to be watchful with hope, to be patient in your affliction, to pray continually, and to love well. This is what it looks like when we stop shuffling around, stop looking at just what's going on around us and at our feet, and we actually look up and we actually engage with God in fresh new ways, day by day, moment by moment. Psalm 4610 says, be still and know that I'm God. I love that that verse starts with the word be. God's saying, in order for you to know that I'm God, you're going to have to be still. There's something so divine and powerful and otherworldly about getting still and stepping into the presence of God. It opens us up to a place that's like nothing that earth has to offer and allows us to be filled up by God so that our needs can be met, the places that we feel empty, in order to launch us out so that we can live out of being loved by God with the people that God has put into our life. And that brings me to the next place where I believe the goal of presence is for us to grow in love, to become like Christ. And Christ is love, right? Us going and entering into presence with God is not about performance. It's not about us checking something off the list, saying, okay, I've spent my time with God for today. It's about us actually entering into relationship with a person. Remember John, the book of John chapter one at the very, very beginning says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So when we think about spiritual disciplines, practices that we enter into, reading the word, praying, fasting, service, and so many others, presence is like the umbrella over the top of all of those things. And it takes time and it takes practice. Even just to enter into presence takes practice. And I know that this is true because I've been walking with God for a long time and I'm a human. And so even in our relationships with each other, we don't initially just step into relationship with people and we're like best friends from the beginning. It takes work and it takes time. So I wanna share a story with you about our oldest son, David, who I just told you is 35 and our youngest grandchild, Winnie, who is almost two. Now, Winnie is a COVID baby, essentially. She was born in August and then COVID came that March. She was born in 2019. And so essentially, like I said, she had kind of a rough birth. And so she, they were at home quite a bit when she was a real small baby and then quarantine happened. So she hasn't had a lot of engagement with others, um, especially those outside of our family. But even with David, he hadn't spent a lot of time with Winnie and it was killing him that she wasn't instantly loving him, that she wasn't just believing that he was like super fun and that he loved her with all of himself. And so when we were together as a family and it came time to say goodbye or even just throughout our time together, David would work really, really hard to create ways to get Winnie to engage with him. Even if I was gonna give Winnie something or if Paige was gonna give her something or her dad or whatever, David would say, let me give it to her because I want her to know that I'm giving her good things. And so he has worked really, really, really hard and he has consistently pursued her and he has spent more time with her recently. And so that's been closer and closer and closer together. And so this is a pic of them together. And like I said, she's almost two now. And this is the latest picture of them together. And the reason I wanted to show you this picture a side by side is because I'd love if you can to zone in, really take note of each of their faces. They're delighting in each other. And that is what I think presence does. Presence together over time creates an opportunity 
for love to grow. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I think that's really important for us to remember because the goal is love. Remember Paul said in Galatians, the only thing that counts is faith working itself out in love. Love matters. And we will not be good lovers of people. We won't love well unless we go and learn from the all caps lover himself. And so if we are gonna be people that are living out of being loved by God, we are going to have to continue to press in just like David did with Winnie time and time and time and time again. And actually, I hate to even say we're going to have to because it's the best invitation that there is available to us that God himself, the same God who holds all things together, the same God who makes the sun rise every morning and the moon come up every night, the same God who knows the amount of hairs on our head, the same God who knows the beginning from the end is saying, come, I love you. I'm delighted in you. I wanna be with you. It's my delight to spend time with you, to equip you for what I already know is coming. So as we go and we're entrusting ourselves, we do so with a little bit of blinder on because we don't know what tomorrow brings, but God does. We don't know what the next hour brings, but God does. So as we spend time with him, he's shoring us up and he's equipping us to take us to the thing that he has next for us. I wanna remind you of two things as we close. The first thing is out of Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 where it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We have access and can come boldly to the throne of God because of what Jesus did for us. It's an invitation we're not gonna wanna say no to. It's a good one every time. And if it doesn't feel good every time, that's okay. Keep coming, keep entering in with God and tell him, say, God, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having a hard time engaging with you. I don't know what this looks like. I'm new at this, or it's hard in this season. Tell him that's what engagement means. That's what it is. It's honesty in each other's presence. So that's my prayer that you will, that we will be people that will do that, that we will step in, that we will enter in to, and say yes to God's invitation to come. The invitation that cost him everything in order to make it possible for us to do so. I wanna leave you with this prayer from Richard Foster. It goes like this. God has graciously allowed me to catch a glimpse into his heart and I wanna share with you what I've seen. Today, the heart of God is an open wound of love. He aches over our distance and preoccupation. He mourns that we do not draw near to him. He grieves that we've forgotten him. He weeps over our obsession with muchness and manyness. He longs for our presence. And he is inviting you and me to come home, to come home to where we belong, to come home to that for which we were created. His arms are stretched wide to receive us. His heart is enlarged to take us in. For too long, we have been in a far country, a country of noise and hurry and crowds, a country of climb and push and shove, a country of frustration and fear and intimidation. And he welcomes us home, home to serenity and peace and joy, home to friendship and fellowship and openness home to intimacy and acceptance and affirmation. We do not need to be shy. He invites us into the living room of his heart where we can put on old slippers and share freely. He invites us into the kitchen of his friendship where chatter and batter mix in good fun. He invites us into the dining room of his strength where we can feast to our heart's delight. 
He invites us into the study of his wisdom where we can learn and grow and stretch and ask all the questions we want. He invites us into the workshop of his creativity where we can be co-laborers with him, working together to determine the outcomes of events. He invites us into the bedroom of his rest where new peace is found and where we can be naked and vulnerable and free. It is also the place of deepest intimacy where we can know and be known to the fullest. Let's pray. Father, as we move into what it looks like to enter into presence with you, real presence, God, we're gonna need you to teach us. We're gonna need you to do just like this prayer of Richard Foster's and peel away the distractions, the noise and the clatter. But we know that you will because we know that you long to be with us because you've called us your own, your kids, and you delight in us. I pray that you teach us how to receive your love, expand our capacity, God, so that we can receive your love in ways that will enable us to go out and to live out of being loved by God. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, New Day.